Hi, this is Jeremy from Karuna. Um, Karuna is a pretty new boat to us. Uh, shortly after we bought it, we did a lithium install. And the second half of July, we did our first pretty extended trip after the lithium install. And the results we saw uh, really weren't what we expected. We kind of applied all the settings to what the battery manufacturer recommended. And the, the main issue we saw is the regulator is just going into float much, much earlier than we expected. Um, and that, that kind of caused some issues, um, but I just want to kind of go over it. But the lithium install, the major components that we used was basically, you know, it, we used four kilovolt batteries, uh, Victron Multi Plus 2, three kilowatt, inverter charger. Uh, we had to change the voltage regulator from a BOMAR, I think it was an AR5, to a 618, because it supports lithium and there's more options. An alternator protection device, as well as the Victron AgroFed battery isolator. The charger settings we used, um, these are common with both the inverter charger and the alternator. Some of the settings are specific to the alternator. But we set the bulk voltage to 14.1. The minimum bulk duration is six minutes. Absorption voltage is 14.0. The minimum absorption duration is also six minutes. So most battery manufacturers recommend the bulk and absorption voltage durations to be set as low as possible. So if it hits the bulk voltage, it should go to the next stage, which is absorption almost immediately. And when absorption is complete, it should go into the next stage. Um, our battery actually says not to float, but the minimum absorption duration should be two minutes or less. But for ours, we can only set it to six minutes. And then flow voltage is 13.4. So something we noticed with lithium in general is the float voltage of 13.4 is less than the resting voltage when the battery state of charge is over say 80 percent so that causes the battery to slowly lose charge over time while it's at the dock so this was our first day of our trip when we got to the boat it was only at 73 percent so i started um, i told i turned the inverter charger from charge only to off and then inverter charge and that starts the cycle over. And this is pretty much what a lithium charge cycle should look like. Um, it goes immediately to the max current, which is 100 amps for the inverter charger. It'll maintain 100 amps until the voltage reaches bulk voltage, uh, which in this case is a little bit low. And then it'll continue through absorption until the current drops off. So we'll see this current slowly drop off and then you know it will reach the maximum voltage of 14.1 a current of 10 amps and then it'll drop into float after that then the current will drop off back off but if you notice the voltage at the beginning of the cycle was 1376 and we went from 75 percent to 93 95 percent and the voltage only changed a tenth of a volt so 1387, 1384, somewhere in there. But the voltage between 73% and 94% was only a tenth of a volt. So it's there's very, very little voltage change, and that's kind of part of the challenge when these chargers are only sensing voltage. So if we go to our second day, we left pretty early that day. I think that's good. So we spent the night, we left about 6 a.m. Um, so when we left, I can zoom into this a little bit. So when we left, we were at approximately, you know, 93% state of charge. Um, this is probably when we powered everything on and the voltage dropped a little bit. But we left the dock at, you know, approximately 10 till 6, uh, we see the voltage go up to 13.44. 4. 
the refrigerator is probably running, so the current's only, you know, 50, 50, 55 amps. And it kind of peaked, you know, 10 minutes later at 1361. My assumption at this point is it dropped into absorption and the voltage went down slightly. And then, you know, by six, 20 minutes into the charge, um, we were back to, to, to float. So we kind of left in the morning, you know, a charge for a little while and it dropped right back into float. The state of charge is 96%. So, I mean, it isn't that big of a deal. I mean, it didn't get to a hundred, but that's not that big of a deal. But if we look what happened the rest of the day, we motored all day. And even knowing we motored all day, um, we slowly lost capacity throughout the day. Um, I would say that this is probably about when we anchored was here, but with the float at 13.4, we really didn't charge the battery at all. It just, it slowly went out, went down throughout the day. And these, these big dips are kind of, I just, the refrigerator is probably what's cycling and then occasionally the microwave. And let's go to the next day in the 17th. We left a little bit later that day. So we found out um, that our refrigerator uses a lot of power and we should really turn off at night. So mainly I think from the refrigerator, we kind of started at a lower state of charge than we wanted when we anchored. But when I woke up in the morning, um, we were down to like 20%, which with lithium is okay. With flooded would not be good, but with lithium is okay. Um, so this is kind of what our second day, I mean, even starting in a really low state of charge, this is what our second day looked at. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we left around nine o'clock. Um, I do think we had to start and stop the motor. No, maybe not, we left, we left at nine o'clock. So it was charging pretty well. We're around the 80 amp range for a few hours. And, you know, I think it dropped off here because we had to check in. We crossed the border and had to check in and we got fuel in this range. Um, so we did start and stop the engine a couple hours a day. But when the battery is at a pretty low percentage of charge, the alternator is kind of working as expected because the voltage just isn't high enough to really reach the maximum bulk voltage. Um, but then when we go into here, you know, it's, it's charging pretty well. You know, we got a couple of hours in here pretty well. And then, you know, about 50 or 60%, they kind of, the voltage I think got high enough and it went back into float, you know, around this range. So about 70%, the battery went back into float. Um, I think these restarts were more us anchoring than anything else. I think this is probably when we checked into the border. Um, so we checked in the border, got fuel, and this is kind of the next, the next charging cycle. So it was pretty similar again. You know, we, we kind of started the motor up again. Um, it got up to 13.58 and it slowly went back into float shortly after that. So we only got maybe 30 minutes of charging from the second cycle. And that meant we kind of ended our day anchoring at, you know, 80% battery. Every time we started and stopped, we got 30 minutes of cycling and then the battery went back down into float. So we're, we're motoring most of the day and we're ending our day at 75% charge, which isn't ideal at all. So we'll show one more day here. And what I did the following day, because it was kind of starting to be a problem and something that I noticed. So we started the next day. So we only used 25% that night. I think I turned the fridge off, which is good. Um, but our normal charge cycle in here, you know, we started charging at 9 a.m. And it pretty much dropped back down 30 
and we're already we're already back into float within you know an hour or so. So we got back to pretty similar, like 60, 70 percent seems to be where you know the battery, the alternator is thinking that it's got sufficient charge and it's dropping it to float. So I kind of noticed at this point we're still at the 70 percent. And I went through and actually checked the regulator settings and everything looked good. Um, just going to, to the program menu and restarts the cycle. But this is kind of a new charging cycle and the duration for this charging cycle, it's two months. The duration for this charging cycle is also maybe 30 minutes. So we start charging here. 13.62, 70 amps, and it drops into float, right, just shortly after that. So that was kind of day three. Um, I ended up changing the minimum bulk duration to, to a little bit over an hour. And that was a workaround we did for most of our trip because we don't usually motor too much over an hour and that kind of gives us a better state of charge. But this is a little bit later when we're at the marina. So we got the inverter charger and we got back up to 100%. But kind of the overall trend is, you know, we can charge up to 60, 60 to 70%. And then the, the voltage regulator is thinking that the battery is charged and it's dropping into float. So we're losing about 30% of our capacity because of this issue. So for the rest of the trip, we basically um, we basically kept the the minimum absorption time set to two hours, and that ended up being uh, a workaround for us. You know, I, the motor is pretty loud. I don't really want to run it more than an hour at anchor, and we went to marinas every couple of days. And you know, between between the marina and you know charging once or twice a day or motoring the two hour absorption time was enough, you know, that kind of put 200 amp hours into the battery and that kind of got us through the trip. Um, it's, it still bugged me. I still did a little bit of research. I tried to, I enjoyed the trip more than troubleshot this, but I basically read an interesting article on Marine How To um, that discussed, you know, how important the negative voltage senses, especially lithium. The bomber manual, says that the negative the negative for the regulator, there isn't a negative voltage sense, the negative for the regulator should be as close to the battery as possible. But all the diagrams I've seen through them as well as other sources showed the negative just being at the alternator. Um, so that's how I had it wired. So when I got back, I decided to measure the voltage at the alternator and compare that to what the voltage was at the battery. So this is kind of me running at the dock. Um, it's only been running for a few minutes, but we're at 13.76 volts. Um, if I go through and, you know, we're, we're putting in a little, a little over 100 amps. The, the alternator is derated by 20%. So the bell load manager is set to four, um, just until I get a feel for how hot the alternator gets and how much the belt wears. That's felt like a good starting point. Um, I don't wanna burn through belts or damage the alternator. Um, this is just another shunt that's right off the alternator that's reading about the same thing. But if we go through and we look at the voltage, um, the alternator is reading 14.68. And that's like a 0.9 volt, 0.9 volts drop across the wire and I'm using one gauge wire which is a little undersized and you know so I get a, a fairly significant voltage drop across the wire because of that so if I estimate that you know half or 0.45 volts is being dropped across the negative then I can definitely see how the negative needing to go directly to the battery is, is pretty important with lithium. Okay, so if we look at, you know, the, the inverter charging and what the process should really look like, 
we can kind of see that, you know, almost immediately the, the battery voltage is 1376. It's within a couple of minutes of charging. Um, we're also putting 100 amps at that point in time. So if we add, you know, 0.45 to 1376, the alternator already thinks it hit its bulk voltage and the absorption voltage. So pretty much what it was doing is, you know, there's a six minute and an eight, I think an 18 minute timer for the minimum bulk and the minimum absorption. Um, since the alternator thinks it's at 14.1, 14.2, almost immediately in the charge cycle, even when the battery is 20, 30%, uh, what's happening is I only get 30 minutes of charging before it drops into float. You know, I did a workaround and changed that so that I was gonna get two hours of charging, um, but it's, it's still kind of the same issue. So it's only charging, you know, kind of during the 30 minutes that was set to. So if we take a look at this, uh, maybe this is a, is a good one. Um, yeah, so you can see we, we kind of start charging you know, we're at 13.58, um, and that's at 12.30. You know, voltage isn't rising, so it might have, this might have been bulk, and it's already in the absorption cycle. So, you know, 12.30, and then 40 minutes later, we're back into float. Um, VRM is only like every 10 or 15 minutes, so these numbers, right, aren't exact. But, but yeah, that's what I think what, that's what it is occurring. So I've already kind of moved, I've already moved the negative to go directly to the battery for the external regulator. Um, we're gonna go out tomorrow. I don't know if I'm gonna run long enough to really do a good test, but that's kind of my theory and kind of what I think is going on right now is the voltage drop across the negative cables is great enough that that that's causing the, the external regulator to you know, go into bulk and absorption and drop into float almost you know as soon as the timer is time out so it'll do six minutes 18 minutes and drop in drop into float we change absorption to two hours so it'll charge for two hours but but it's it basically thinks it's fully charged almost as soon as, you know, it's, as soon as it's, I start charging because the voltage drop is so high and the wires being undersized definitely contributes and lithium, you know, the, the current F dropping off, there's really no tail to it, like AGM. Um, if it was AGM, then the current would drop off much, much sooner and the voltage drop would be less and it probably wouldn't be as much of an issue. Uh, with, with lithium, I definitely think this is most likely the issue. Um, once I get a good test to kind of show and you know see if the alternator charge profile looks the same as what I'm getting with the inverter charger, then I'll either add to the, the end of this video or I'll make another video. But but that's that's my theory and that's my recommendation right now. You know, it's I think everyone knows the positive voltage sense should go to the battery as close to the battery, but I think the negative is less obvious. So run both positive and negative, you know, as close to the battery as you can. Positive should be fused. Um, yeah, I think it's very important with lithium. Thanks.